Hey there, folks. Hope you're having a good week this week. We are in the middle of Holy Week, which is Jesus' last week on earth. He's entered into Jerusalem, and now the conflict and the tension is building between Jesus and the religious and political leaders of the day. They're trying to figure out what to do with him, trying to figure out who he is. And all of this ultimately ends in his death, in, in them killing him and get, getting rid of him. But along the way, in the Gospels, Jesus is also being revealed as king. Unbeknownst to the leaders of the day, Jesus is actually the ruler. He is king. And as we follow the story, don't just jump ahead to Easter, but follow the story of Jesus' final week, we learn what it means for Jesus to be king and what it means to follow him into that life. So I hope you've been able to um, reflect on Jesus' final week, what it means for your life, what it means for our world, and hopefully the stuff I've been providing um, through the blog has been um, useful just to think about things and to follow the story. So I've got before me yeast, two kinds of yeast. I have instant commercial yeast and I have cultivated homemade fermented yeast. Now both of these will make bread just fine. No problem making bread with either one, but there is a difference between the two. The instant yeast is fast. It's instant. It's active. Uh, you just open the package, you dump it in to the flour and the water and the salt, you mix it up, and then you let it rise, which moves pretty, pretty quickly, uh, and then you bake your bread all in the same day. It's effective, it's quick, it's fast. Cultivated yeast is not so. Cultivated yeast, you can't just dump it in the morning you want to make bread and then go from there. Uh, fermented cultivated yeast that I have here, you have to, uh, in order to make bread, you have to plan the day before. You have to remix the yeast and then you have to wait 12 or 16 hours. You just got to sit there and wait. And it will go from, um, can't see, there we go, it will go from down here to about up here. It'll double or triple in size in the course of 12 or 16 hours. And then after it's hit that point, you can then dump in the amount that you need into your flour and water and salt and mix it. But then you have to wait again because cultivated yeast doesn't rise in, in bread dough as quickly as instant yeast does. It moves a little slower. So you gotta wait again. It's a long process, it's slow. But most bakers will tell you, hands down, which one makes better bread. The cultivated yeast. The instant yeast works fine. It makes bread. That's good. But if you want bread that has more robust, more complex flavor, that is just a better product, you got to go with the slow. You got you to gotta do the waiting process. You got to let the yeast do its thing and do its work before you even make the bread dough. But then once it's mixed in the bread dough, then you got to let it do its thing again. You can't hurry it. You have to wait. You got to be patient. But what you get in the end is better. We live in a culture of fast coffee, fast food, fast internet. We have trained ourselves to be quick and fast and to demand quick and fast. And, and sometimes it's it's to the point where we can't sit still and wait for anything. Now, sometimes quick and fast is good and useful. It's good to get things done quickly sometimes, but that should not be the norm for our lives. By far, the waiting process is always going to turn out a better, more robust, more complex product. And the product I'm thinking of is the quality of our lives. The quality of our lives is better when we are able to wait. And it doesn't matter what we're waiting for. Sometimes it's a little thing. Sometimes it's something bigger. Right now, we are all in the midst of waiting. We are waiting on uh, things to change. And we can't do much about it. We have to wait. And maybe we shouldn't be in too much of a hurry to get back to the quick and fast. Maybe the waiting is good for us to rethink how the pace of our lives actually should be. 
the Old Testament prophet Isaiah talks a little bit about waiting. Through Isaiah, God says to the Israelites in Isaiah 40, Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. The Israelites are complaining. They're saying, God, we, we seem to be hidden from you. You seem to be not noticing us. In Isaiah, or God through Isaiah says this. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. In response to the Israelites wondering where God is, Isaiah says, you're talking to the God who created the whole world. This God outlasts even the quickest and the fastest and the strongest youth that you know. This God will outlast the quickest and the strongest and the fastest technology. This God will beat them all because those things will run out. But this God is everlasting. And, and Isaiah says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and never be faint. Those who hope in the Lord, those who cultivate the art of waiting, of waiting on God, will turn out to be more complex, more robust, more capable in their lives. We don't always like waiting. Sometimes we want the quick and the fast. But that's not how God works. God is a God of time, of patience, of waiting. Because God knows it's for our good that we learn to wait on him. That we learn to rest in his timing. Wherever you are, whatever you're waiting on, know that the God of the universe is growing something flavorful, <laughs> something wonderful in your life and in all of our lives, but we have to wait. We have to wait on the process and let God do his thing. So rest in the waiting today, people. Rest in knowing that the God of the universe is giving you hope, and we will be all the better for the waiting. God's peace to you today.